good afternoon, good evening, good whatever time of day it is. Thank you for tuning in to Conversations with Dr. Don. For your first time viewers, Conversations with Dr. Don is an ongoing series of one-hour standalone talk shows where I interview interesting people like most of you out there about who they are as unique, one-of-a-kind individuals and about whatever it is that we have decided to talk about. And my guest this evening is Henry Elder, MD, psychiatrist. And uh, when I say that, it makes me kind of nervous because I'm a clinical psychologist. And for many, many years, I had to report to one of these guys to supervise me in my learning and training. <laughs> <laughs> so I get that out there right away to take care of the nervousness. Now I'm under your supervision, <laughs> Don. <laughs> How shall I address you? In, uh, you can call me Don or Dr. Don. How shall I address you? All right. I'm Dr. Hank is, is how I go yeah. quite often. That's great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Hank. On the yeah. And how are you feeling right now? I'm quite nervous. Um, I, we just had that conversation about being used to being in front of the, of the camera. And, and, uh, and uh, I have been in front of another kind of a camera. Uh, you know, we, we were talking about... Um, the the new kind of of uh, of work that I'm doing, which is the the video conferencing type of work. Um, as a psychiatrist, I see patients in a in a county in Klamath County. Mm -hmm. That's 300 miles away from from where I live and work. And uh, you travel a lot. No, Not I don't. Really I, about video I, conferencing. I travel from my from my bedroom to the to the next room where I do my uh, do my video work. Yeah, you have to tell me a little more about that as we go along here because mm. that's way beyond my time. I gave that up a long time ago. <laughs> but let's continue on. You know, the show goes in two major parts. First part is who you are personally, and uh, second part is uh, mental health needs and health care reform. And you chose that title, so it must be something sig significant about that. So we'll talk some more about that when we get to the second half. Uh, as we go along here, if I ask you a question that you don't care to answer, you can tell me get lost or whatever. But rarely do I do that. Really? I don't think I would do that. <laughs> My teachers, like you, taught me a long time ago to guess what it is it's safe to say and not say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, as I say that, I think about Wilfred Bozeman, uh, MD psychiatrist in uh, State Mental Hospital in California. He was one of my supervisors and a personal friend. And Wilfred was so good. I didn't realize until after he died that I also had a big transference going on all this time. I, I made, made him out to be my papa and wasn't even aware of it. Mm. And, uh, that's another story and a half. It makes my eyes kind of wet to think of it because he was a dear friend, of course. Mm -hmm. But don't you die on me, okay? Okay. <laughs> Not at least right now. <laughs> Yeah. So let's start with some of the little questions about who you are. Uh, if I were to ask your best friend, who is Dr. Hank? What would your best friend say? But Dr. Hank is what? Oh, that's, um, I, he, he would most likely say that, that he's a very serious uh, person, very, um, very uh, politically oriented and, and very um, professionally oriented, but is um, has a really soft family side. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I'd like him to say. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> that sounds good to me. Mm -hmm. So, when and where were you born? I was uh, I was born in St. Helens in Oregon. In Oregon, uh -huh. yes. I, I've been pretty much uh, completely an Oregonian uh, my whole life. Uh, so St. Helens and and uh, and then small towns, pretty much from from that point until I graduated from high school. Um, graduated from a logging town, and um, it, that is, has probably about 600 people now uh, in the in the in the town. Yeah, and you know, logging it means it was shrinking. It's been shrinking uh, throughout the years, and but it was a wonderful place. It was. You know, it was uh, it was a woodsy place. It was uh, a place to go fishing and, and uh, hiking and camping, and, and uh, I really enjoyed my growing up there. It was really quite nice. And then from there, uh, pretty much have have stayed in the uh, you know in the higher education and, and bigger places 
mm -hmm. uh, Corvallis being, um, you know, now I'm living in Canby, which is kind of a <laughs> <laughs> outskirts of the, of the big town. So what year were you born in? I was born in 1949. 49, okay. Is there any signif anything significant about your cultural heritage or national heritage, or you're just plain old American white bread? Well, pretty much uh, uh, white bread. Uh, Scottish is the is the is the background. Uh, you know the longer term um, background. Uh -huh. My uh, my sister is a genealogist, and she's. She's discovered uh, lots of other Scots that uh, for me to get acquainted with, uh -huh. and um, but I don't, you know, I, I don't consider myself a Scot. Uh, I, I really think of myself as being, um, you know, just a, a, an American. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you have a religious preference that you want to let the viewers know about or not? Well, it's actually uh, relatively new for me to to uh, uh, to be a humanist. Um, you know, um, I met you. One of those, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I, I I really um, well. I think one of the major principles of being humanist is tolerance. That that we really are are um, uh, able to accept people of all religions, um, although we. Uh, although humanists tend to be uh, uh, non or a religious or non religious yeah. mm -hmm. um, there's there's really a a, a strong um, sense of being tolerant of being able to to uh, to accept uh, that that other people are religious and and um, and and a desire to see those people be tolerant too of course sure, of course yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I like to think that if I have an idea what you've done in the past and how you behave in the past, then I can guess how you'll probably behave in the future. And if you're a tolerant, uh, a kind uh, sort of a person, then I can expect you to treat me that way too. Mm -hmm. But of course, I can't always get a, a complete history of a guy if I've just met him and we're going to spend some time together, but I'll make a guess. <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, and your formal education, of course. Uh, your education is in uh, medicine. Yeah, I went to the University of Oregon in Eugene, and and then went to, um, um, some years later went to uh, Oregon Health Sciences University for um, to go to medical school, and um, and then I've done a family practice residency following that. Uh, and practiced for 10 years in, in family medicine before uh, going back to do a psychiatry residency. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so I did a family practice residency in Southern California. Oh, uh, okay. And then a uh, southern neighbor. And then came back and practiced in in uh, in Salem and and uh, uh, before I went back to to uh, to do psychiatry. What possessed you to go into psychiatry? Well, now that's a that's a an, 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 uh, somewhat of an interesting story. I, I was actually practicing in Astoria for a while in family practice, and and um, it was a very difficult time. Uh, and in in, the, in that particular community, uh, there was a um, a lot of fight infighting with uh, doctors in legal battles with each other, and sure. and. Um, and it was, um, I was offered an opportunity to fill in for a psychiatrist that had vacated his practice in, uh, in Washington. I just happened to have a Washington license and, and at the time, and, and so I went to work there and loved it. And, uh, you know, it, this community where I was doing family practice was, you know, just infighting and, 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 you know, terrible things. I would go across the river and they, they'd, Love everything I was doing, and <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so and, and I and I and I loved it. So I went back and got my training, uh, got more training in that, to in in uh, psychiatry. Mm -hmm. So family practice 
What kind of a family practice did you have before your additional training to become a psychiatrist? Well, it was a full, uh, full spectrum family practice. I, I delivered babies, and I, uh, and I did uh, orthopedics, and I, and I did, um, well, just everything that that came your way. Uh, you know, <laughs> if it, we, we, if it was too complicated, I would refer it. That's that's, and, and so I, you know, I, I really believe because of that in 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 the, the very important role of the of the general practitioner of the family practice doc yes um in 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 overall health care um so um but i in the process of doing that too i understand that it i that it's very complicated it's very difficult you know i admire very much the people who can who can hold that together and yeah, and do yeah do that kind of, of um, broad medicine with all of the knowledge that it takes um, yeah. and all of the, um, the skill. Uh, so, you know, that's, it, it wasn't exactly completely a retreat to go to, f to, to psychiatry. <laughs> psychiatry is complicated too. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, yeah. but, uh, but general medicine, family medicine, is is uh, is really a, ch a challenge, and and um, it takes somebody that that loves their work to to stick with it and do a good job. You mentioned uh, orthopedics. Uh, I can I have a free consultation? About three months ago, I had a total knee replacement, and I figure while well, you're here, we can rip you off. For <laughs> oh, a oh well, <laughs> <laughs> you they, mu they must have done a really good job. <laughs> Okay, that's enough of that. You've been getting around pretty well. <laughs> yeah, it's going very, very well. I'm very pleased, yeah. Mm -hmm. Waited uh, too long, of course, as we usually do, until you finally can't stand the pain anymore. Walk 20 feet and then limp for the next uh, 10 feet. But it's done, and I thought I'd throw that in. In case a few of my viewers didn't know, I went under the knife. Huh? But uh, we can talk about some other things, and I'll tell you about the years I've had uh, in psychotherapy and, and family as a patient. So. But no, we were there. <laughs> <All right. laughs> but uh, so, why did you pick psychiatry? Well, partly because I, I really found um, found a lot of enjoyment in that in that particular experience that I had. In, in uh, but I, you know, it, it it occurred prior to that when I was working in um, in my training, my family practice training. There would be people who would come into the ICUs very ill after having overdosed and and uh, and I would I would think oh my gosh you know I can I can deal with the aftermath of of, uh, of the suicide attempt but am I really prepared to deal with with keeping them from getting there you know that, sure. and um, and so it had it occurred to me that maybe um, you know, maybe there was a place for me to, to go that I would be I would feel more engaged with Prevention and of, of something bad happening, yeah. uh, even at that time, and and then when I was in family practice doing work with with people, it was uh, a lot of the time there were there were things that I felt uh, a skill in 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 psychiatry would would help would help a lot more than the other things that I was doing. It would and add to your normal uh, bedside manner that you have as a good physician. Yeah. Yes, to be with somebody and don't start me in the my spiel, as I learned from Dr. Wilfredo many years ago and other people. Uh, so, why, why go ahead? I mean. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so enjoyable. And occasionally, I run across somebody out in, in the world who I've seen in the past, and there's always that special connection. Even after they've graduated from seeing me ten years ago, there's that special recognition that exists between us. The symbiosis isn't there anymore because they've graduated, but there's still that special connection that I know. I help them, you know. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, that I decided to become a shrink of some kind because I wanted to figure out who the heck I was and how it was that I was so unhappy. Bottom line. One of the first requirements when you become some sort of a shrink is to recognize why the heck you're in the business in the first place. And I'm still learning, Dr. Hank. Well, people often say that about us, that, that we are, we are um, you know, there must be a reason for us to be in this uh, shrink business. And, um, and that, that there are 
and it's 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 really quite. I, I think it's true that if you if you don't have some struggle yourself uh, with things like anxiety and depression and and, uh, and or even psychosis, uh, even really really bad stuff that that, that happens, it, you really aren't going to be in a position to to help as much as you would otherwise. Of course. Um, of course yeah. So, uh, you have a, a partner, a boyfriend, girlfriend, a wife, a husband, or what? Well, I'm I'm single now. Um, oh, you are. And, are and you available? I'm available. Sir. Hey, I'm look in that camera sort of. over there. <laughs> 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 Doctor Hanks available out there, you guys. <laughs> I, I I have a very sweet, good friend uh, who lives in Eugene, and and she's a um, she's a prof professor of of. Um, a, a, a retired professor of uh, of literature, mm -hmm. and uh, and we play some some really mean Scrabble games, and and uh, we care about each other, and and so, you know, I'm though I'm sort of single. We 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 spend a lot of time together and enjoy our our time together. No, he's not available. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I jumped the gun on you. That's right. mm -hmm. So that's good. Gee, uh, do you have children? I have uh, I have three children, and part of the reason I'm in Canby is that that I uh, uh, that I'm growing some grandchildren, um, and uh, and um, I have a, a one-year-old granddaughter uh, as my son's wow. uh, that's a precious child, and and I have uh, another one coming within the next um, two months. Uh, my daughter who lives in Gladstone and. Uh, and I also have a son that lives downtown, and um, and I'm glad to be close by him and and uh, get to drop in on him and have them drop in on me. It's it's really quite nice. Do they like you? <laughs> <laughs> well, my my granddaughter, depending on whether I'm good, you know, do what she wants me to do. <laughs> She likes me. <laughs> yeah, because I'm old and I've got grandchildren and great grandchildren, so I know what that's like too. Yeah, I have a good relationship with my children, and I'm, I'm very happy with them. Yeah, good kids. Is it okay to ask you about your political persuasion? Oh, absolutely. I, I, I am. I am. Uh, I am. Um, I um, a well. Let's see. So that's one that I should think about carefully because I don't. Um, because I, I certainly have a, a few libertarian uh, 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 tendencies, but uh, you know I really have to be considered um, Democrat uh, or maybe a little bit pro maybe progressive Democrat, uh, sometimes kind of radical. I like uh, to talk about it in terms of a political continuum. How far on the left? Or the right, am I on the political continuum? So it's easier because some of the names that used to have some validity have become uh, uh, not smart to say, like being a liberal. But mm -hmm. then we're, bringing, we're bringing that back. I'm a, a radical leftist, progressive liberal. Mm -hmm. So there now, what am I? Some of that, yes. <laughs> Well, yes, I I, I am uh, active in the Democratic Party, mm -hmm. and but some of my the, the points of view that I might express here a little, little bit later are are, um, are a bit um, left of Democrat. They're they're uh, um, a bit uh, a, a, a bit more radical than the Democrats want to be. Sure. In a lot of ways. Okay. And you're a humanist too. That says something about you. Have you always been a humanist? You said earlier that you've been arrived, you, you've arrived at it recently. Well, no, I, I have. I have been um, an, a fundamentalist uh, actually in the in the past. I um, I had uh, my my family uh, was a, in a fundamental church when I grew up, in a, and I got baptized, and I, you know, I. Um, I was at, I was pretty strongly um, uh, uh, right right to life. Uh, I was I, I I fought even in my in my years at at Salem Hospital as on the ethics committee there. Um, I fought the the um, 
the Death with Dignity uh, Act and what became, mm -hmm. you know, filed an affidavit uh, against the Death with Dignity Act. Sure. And, um, but since then, if, you know, I, 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 I don't, I, I guess I, I never really have regretted that perspective, but I, you know, I've changed my perspective on it. Mm. Um, I, I really believe the Death with Dignity Act is a, is a, is a good bill, is a good thing. And I, and I, I'm no longer a right to lifer, um, and I am, um, am no longer a, a believer in, um, and so, uh, it's sort of drifted for a, a, a couple of years, but, uh, but, you know, I really find a nice home with the humanist. Yeah. I, I have en enjoyed that, that, uh, group and I'm looking forward to continuing to be part of that. Group. It's a hard choice, uh, right to life, and uh, those kinds of things, because especially for us, we're men too. That kind of plays into it. But uh, I was a Roman Catholic kid, ultra boy, and the whole thing, and almost fundamentalist kind of uh, Louisiana Roman Catholic. You're a fundamentalist Christian, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Do you still think Jesus was pretty cool? Well, uh, yes, I, I think that there were a number of things that 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 Jesus said that 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 made a lot of sense and were really uh, really fine things to to, to say, mm -hmm. or allegedly said. I guess is what yeah, <laughs> in the humanist as a, mode. Again. As a skeptic, <laughs> as a skeptic, I would say that that uh, you know that, that that as far as I can see, uh, Christ was a legend. Um, and um, and that he has some. Um, there were some good things that that uh, that were preached uh, or allegedly preached. <laughs> 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 and I like those. I like many of those things. Yeah, yeah. And any memberships in uh, political or social or civic organizations? Worth mentioning? Well, yes, those viewers. those two things. I, I'm a I'm a Democrat, and and I'm and um, I've been a, a in the, in the Benton County politics. I and the state politics in 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 the Democratic Party. You know, one of my I, I was on the platform committee of the of the state uh, um, Democratic Party uh, in uh, up till about a year ago I, when I'm when I changed my my uh, location. I have no, I'm, I'm no longer in the same um, district. Sure. So, so, I'm, yeah. in, but I'm still, uh, I'm um, getting into the Democratic Party of Clackamas County, and and um, and uh, so I, and getting active there. And one of the things that I that I wanted to encourage them to do is to accept uh, a uh, universal health care, uh, which is, which is really. Yes. Really, my m most um, most active political issue. In, in fact, we, as as the Democratic Party of Oregon, we we passed a uh, platform um, at, which included uh, universal health care, single, yes. mm -hmm. single payer universal health care. Single payer. And I, you know, I'd be glad to explain what that is if anybody needs to. I hear that. We'll hear some more about that later on. But so I'm a member of a of a national organization called Physicians for National Health Program. Mm -hmm. The local organization of of that is sometimes called Mattis Health Doctors. Um, I'm and, a member. And uh, and the um, and that's a group of doctors that that is it tries to be very active in the in the. Uh, in the promotion of universal health care and single payer, I've had a number of members on the show from time to time, and we cut loose and I joined them, and we almost shake the roof. <laughs> well, that is our doctors. Sam Sam Metz is on Metz. here, and I watched he's him very carefully because I want to, you know, emulate him because he's he's such a, a strong spokesman. I really yes. I really admire that guy. And such a lovely human being, yes. too. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Sam. We're talking about you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I, I like one of the one of the things that Sam says is is um, is 
Uh, those people who don't uh, understand that health care is sick uh, haven't must not have recently been to see a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> He's so good. Uh, one more question before we take a break. Did you, any persons uh, uh, from the past or alive today that you particularly look up to, uh, looked up to one, two, or three persons or none? Well, we just talked about one of them, Sam. I, yeah, I, I really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sam, Betts. I really like him, and and you know, as far as the work in in this respect, there's there's a local folk local guy, um, Mike Huntington, who is in the yeah, same group. Yeah, I um, know Mike. He's great. And he's been uh, the the president of the HCAO, which is the Healthcare for All Oregon yes. um, mm -hmm. group, which is a, a a group working for the same purpose for the mm -hmm. for the same thing. So I really admire his. Uh, his work, um, you know, uh, as far as, you know, uh, very famous people, I, you know, I, I, I do admire those strong-voiced people like uh, Winston Churchill and, and uh, um, you know, historical people like that. Um, Martin Luther King. I knew uh, that was coming. <laughs> <laughs> How about FDR? Well, FDR was, uh, you know, I, he, I, he, he was a very important historical person. He was a, he was a, a, a liberal, and, and, uh, and he had to fight for some very important things. And um, so, yeah. yes, I, I, you know, I, I, I don't see him quite so, um, you know, isn't quite so much on a pedestal as those, uh, as, as those other guys. <laughs> yeah. But... He brought us out of the Great Depression, and for that, uh, I would be eternally grateful. So we'd better take a break before our director yells at me in there. All right, let's take a break, Mr. E. back. Thanks for staying tuned. And for you viewers who missed the opening of the show, Conversations with Dr. Don is an ongoing series of one-hour standalone talk shows where I interview interesting people like most of you out there, but you're not as nearly as interesting as Dr. Hank here. And we're going to talk <laughs> about <laughs> the title of the show in a couple minutes or so. So, mental health needs in health care reform. I asked Dr. Hank to uh, give me a, a few prompting questions so I wouldn't run out of steam and figure out what to ask him about because we're on the same page in this area of mental health and health care. And uh, some of the questions we may answer is, what's, what's most needed in mental health care reform? Does Dr. Kitzhaber, the Oregon State's governor, does Dr. Kitzhaber's transformation, and quotes, promise improvement in mental health care? What's good about Obamacare? What's not so good about Obamacare for mental health? So I think I will follow you pretty much this time. I took the lead in the first half. How shall we start this discussion? Well, first of all, Say a few words about something as simple as uh, health care and mental health. We have a whole range of uh, abilities and whatever of the people who watch this show. We have pizza makers, truck drivers, in, in addition to professors and researchers in the whole shot. 
So we know what mental health is. Well, um, there's, um, there's a, a range of, of health care um, needs that are classified as mental health uh, mm -hmm. that are, um, that include, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily want to exclude uh, much, but <laughs> because, uh, you know, we all have mental health um, uh, issues of some kind. Sure. Um, but where people are, are having significant problems with functioning um, because they, uh, because of their mental health, um, that's really what we're talking about, mental health care. Um, and mm -hmm. um, so it includes things like depression and anxiety, and um, which are the most common things that, that, that we see all the time in, 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 in health care. Uh, then there may be things like psychosis, where you hear voices, or you, um, or you're paranoid, you're afraid that you're being followed, or uh, the like, and um, any other. You know, there's a, n a number of other kinds of things that may may interfere with your ability to to complete to function normally, or to, or. Um, I guess I should include. Uh, you, where you may function normally, but you're suffering in some way, yeah, some hurting. some kind of hurting in in some way. Um, so so generally, those people that I most work with, I, since I'm a county doc, um, I, I work for Klamath County, um, and that's in Oregon, uh, in 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 southern far southern Oregon. You know, but the, the show is national, you know, and, and worldwide too. Ah, uh, it is, um, and. Um, and the um, uh, and for those people, they're they're really functionally they're 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 that th th they would be mostly um, served by the Oregon Health Plan, which is the which is the um, Medicaid um, fund, mm -hmm. um, and and then there's uh, then there's a few people who are un uninsured or um, that are also served by that. And, and, a, and a very few people that ha, that have insurance, so they're they're the people that are that are affected in a in a in a in an intense sort of way. So what I you know what I want to say about um, you know so let me let me put my perspective there. I'm a I'm a psychiatrist, so my job primarily uh, in such a system is to is to prescribe. Uh, so we're talking about antidepressants and and antipsychotics and and the like, uh, and uh, and to evaluate and to diagnose. Uh, mm -hmm. So so that's that's pretty much where I am um, there. I have a private practice where my where my practice is mostly psychotherapy, which is mm -hmm. helping people to psychologically deal with with problems. Usually more on the order of anxiety disorders and depression. That was more more my thing when I had my ongoing practice, and I used to refer uh, borderline personalities and heavy duty mental illness and court referrals, and I wanted to be successful, so I wanted to deal with the ninety eight percent of normal neurotics like us, if I may. Mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Yeah. So yeah, normal neurotics. Those people are having some difficulty with uh, with suffering, but uh, but are actually. Managing to hold things together fairly well. Um, yes. That's that's. So you're wanting to deal with the suffering. You're wanting to keep them from losing their their function. You know. So I have a number of people who are temporarily off work because they you know, they're having panic attacks, that kind of thing. Sure. Uh, or they're depressed. Um, so uh, you know, my concern uh, is that um, there's. It, it, in the realm of, of mentally ill uh, folks, there are a lot of people who don't get served, uh, who are suffering intensely, but but have no way of accessing care, even in even when we have the Medicaid system, even when we have the um, in, you know um, we have Obamacare coming to try to provide more care for people. We have the transformation uh, ideas of Kitzhaber uh, and the legislature mm -hmm. uh, w with the intent of, of providing more care and better care for, for
for people. Even with that, we, we are, are likely to see um, the poor people and the mentally ill suffer more than um, and, and be left out in the cold more than, more than and, and sometimes literally left out in the cold yes. with, the, with the mentally ill um, people who are unable to even find a place to live, even find a place to stay. Those things are, are I think that's where if we, if we care to look, we see the most pain and the most suffering uh, as a result of our inability to provide health care for everyone that needs it. Why is it where we're not providing health care for everyone who needs it in this richest country in the world? Well, <laughs> a very big question and of course. a very controversial one. Uh, but uh, my idea is that, that it's because we have, um, w w w because of our great inequalities uh, of, of y y that that economically speaking, we have we have increased this difference between the very poor and the and the very rich, and um, you know, and uh, although we sort of have the philosophy that that the very poor are there because, uh, you know, because they they aren't uh, responsible enough, uh, you know, that's that's a very pernicious uh, perspective when when we have people who sim simply can't afford it or or have been hurt in so many ways that they simply can't function. Uh, to leave them out in the cold is, is, is cruel. And, and some of us in our country believe that way. Mm. That's why we are where we are now. With it. We have so many who are left out in the cold, so to speak. And, uh, and, and so one of the things that I, that, I, that I really think is important, and I, you know, that, that, that that the equality, I mean, the Occupy had it right uh, about this, that, 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 that this is one of the major ills of our society, is that this, this huge inequality. So I see this in talking with people um, uh, commonly, that, that they'd really like to work, they'd really like to, to provide for their family, they'd really like to, uh, to, to, to be productive, but they, they can't because, not just because they are disabled by uh, a, a, a mental illness, but because there there isn't an easily available uh, um, uh, job for them to do. Um, Anymore, and, the way the economy is going, and that's a that's a big problem. We if if we were to solve that, if even even have a little bit of impact on. On our economy, we can have a big impact on on uh, the problems of mental illness, um, and it, we certainly can't ever make it go away. But uh, but that would be really one of the most important things, I think. And then, of you know, then uh, is is the the political piece about reforming mental health or or medical care. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in a, a big piece. So if you could handle the economy first, <laughs> deal with that. The next piece, or actually, it's they're they're interrelated things of course. because because healthcare is sucking uh, huge dollars out of uh, you know the medical health care, even even mental health care to some degree. Although mental health care is is a, is a is an orphan. Uh, yeah, is a, is is not well well funded relative to the the. Uh, other medical care, uh, so medical care uh, is um, it, it, it is uses a lot of, of funds and a lot of resources, and and it so becomes uh, a drag on the economy in some ways because it's it's really um, well it causes bankruptcies, it causes you know failures in in uh, in 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 um, in um, in businesses, and uh, is a huge burden on our economy. If we could find a way to make it work efficiently, then um, then that would be much less of a problem. You know? I had someone suggested that we have two things we're looking at when it comes to mental health or health care. There's health care, and what's going on nowadays, for the most part in this country, is a health care business.
and business is the bottom line that they're looking at, rather than caring for fellow human beings. And if we would do what's required to have our focus be on caring, rather than making money, things would be better, as in some other uh, industrialized or modern day uh, societies, they do much better with health care than we do in America. Yes, and that's that's one reason why Obamacare is is not a bad, you know, even though it was probably meant to be a, uh, you know, something to to label and as, as a negative thing, mm -hmm. and, you know, at, at least they they do have at least there's care uh, included in that. Uh -huh. um, so. I, you, the, the couple of the other questions that we had uh, of uh, about, um, well, bef before I go to those other things, I, I won't, you know, I wanted to t talk about what the what the PNHP, what the the healthcare for all Oregon is is, is offering as a solution to to uh, to to this problem of of healthcare uh, inequality and healthcare um, excess. Um, and well, or, or maybe even talk a little bit more about the healthcare excess problems, healthcare cost excess, yes. and healthcare shortcomings. Uh, as you said, the business uh, aspect of it is, is 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 has gone so far that 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 the business of care, the 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 the, the, um, the intent and the and, and the work of caring for people is has com become secondary, and that yes. and the profit motive has led to a you know a huge ex uh, expansion of, of cost, mostly mostly in the insurance uh, uh, area and in the and in the big equipment uh, the big medical equipment areas and the and the and our colleagues are. Uh, Friends who are who are doing good work, but getting high pay uh, in the surgeries, um, and uh, so that's where uh, where a, a lot of cost is going that doesn't need to be there, um, and, and and so reforming that and being able to provide care with less overhead, with less cost in uh, to in in the system. As so many, as all of the other, as all of our developed country um, friends <laughs> in the other countries. Uh, there are some who suggested that we need to do what's required <coughs> to get the insurance business out of health care completely. So yeah. that's the point of Physicians for National Health Program. PNHP. Uh, Google PNHP <laughs> out there. <laughs> yeah. Yes, please. Uh, what do you and think of that idea? I, I think it's a great idea. Well, it's a great idea. Now, you, you, it, it does appear that that's an, a socialist idea. Um, oh, heavens. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that a socialist idea, you know, uh, we, we see our, our uh, you know, our communist countries, our socialist country, uh, Friends have, you know, have have been unable to make it sus to sustain it. Uh, you know, their their experiment in in socialism. But we may overlook the fact that people have had this kind of system that we're talking about a healthcare system that is uh, that it, that cares about people and has that as the center uh, center of its uh, of, of its efforts all around the world. And it ha and has functioned better than ours. Doctor yes. Hank, can I pick a, pick a pick a fight with you? Sure, of course. <laughs> it sounds like you're talking about communism and socialism in the same breath, as though they're so closely related, and so they should be talked about at the same time. There's a radical difference. I'm a democratic socialist uh -huh. for years and years and years, and there's a world of difference. And as I think those countries that have successful healthcare systems, you might say that that initially they're capitalistic. But their healthcare system is socialistic, and it's successful as far as I'm concerned. That's a, and, and that's a very good point, and, and that, that's, I'm glad you made that. <laughs> thank you, thank you for letting me challenge but, you. Well, uh, you know, the the, the point of, of a a um, a program like um, single payer, universal healthcare. Uh -huh. Single payer meaning that it's that it, it, there is a there is a single um, Organizational uh, um, 
there is a, a single organization that oversees the uh, the uh, the health care, the, the financing of, of this. Um, that may be a socialist idea in the sense that it's it's socially interested. It's it's interested in serving the, the, the social good. Sure. Um, but it 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 has a it it is a can be a capitalist enterprise. It can be um, the individuals that that serve it can be uh, can be private, private practitioners and and um, and that's how it works in in Canada. You know that's not a swear word, Canada. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have a, a very good uh, health care system. It has its drawbacks like the uh, it, that are far less important than the drawbacks of, of our own uh, health care system. Um, and they, they, they just do a better job. We can do a better job. We can do it. Uh, we can serve all of the people that need to be served, including the mentally ill, um, in, uh, in a better way and less, less costly. With less cost, with less drag on our economy, we can do a better job. Uh, are we answering your questions specifically? I'm not sure we're close, but we're not, not there. Dr. Kitzhaber's transformation promise. Well, OK. So in Oregon, we, we're, we're working on a, on a transfer, quote, transformation, um, health care transformation project. And um, yeah, I put Kitzhaber's name on it, but he's not the only one. It's really, uh, it's really a, a politically popular um, uh, effort that's really, r really uncommon for or uh, Oregon is really a, a, a pioneering this. I think it has uh, promise. It, it has promise. Uh, the, the, I think, though, that there's, um, well, so the, the idea of this print transformation project um, is to establish uh, coordination, c coordinated care organizations. That is, um, the, the idea is to coordinate care uh, with all uh, providers, including the, mentally, the, the mental health providers, to, to provide a, a good integrated, that, that's another one of those key words, um, service to people. Now, the hope is uh, that it will, will save money and that it will serve more people. And uh, this is primarily right now aimed at the Medicaid population um, and with the hope that it will have such show good, um, uh, a, a very good outcome and, 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 and work so well that it can apply to um, some of the, some of the, the, um, uh, the, the teachers' organizations and the, and the public. Uh, but he will still have the insurance comp 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 uh, companies involved. Well, yes. So this, these are a little bit different from the from the Obamacare, uh, uh, which are the um, w w the exchange, the the insurance exchanges. Um, this is a kind of an ex a, 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 an, an insurance exchange for just for the for the um, uh, Medicaid population at this point. Uh -huh. So, um, is that the the. I think that the most important thing that needs to be mentioned about these is that they're, they're, when, it's, when the words patient-centered are uh, used, that, that I think that's kind of neglected, that, that the idea is that, that the patients will be part of the process of providing this care and, and limiting this care. Uh, so right now, even in, uh, you know, the that expensive medications or expensive procedures are sort of high demand, you know, highly demanded by, by patients. And that's part of the reason for the, for the higher costs. If you have patients that, are, that take responsibility for the, the costs and the, and the effectiveness of, of what's going on, they will, it will produce better care and less cost. And so that, that's part of the, of the hope for all of that. So primarily, these are um, are, are these are are um, uh, Medicaid populations for Medicaid for for uh, medical care and for mental health, um, and um, and I think that that in in much of the of the state this is going quite well. It's it's 
it's about to become uh, a um, the, the hundred percent of the care pretty much hundred percent of the care for for um, the Medicaid population do you think it's uh, possible that we're going to eventually have a, a, a Medicare for all kind of a system going on in the US of A? I certainly hope it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's possible. And, and um, you know, I, I think that, that one of the things that, that happened with, the, uh, uh, with Canada is that they began organiz organizing on the basis of, uh, of, you know, one of the provinces. And, and, yes. then, and then the provinces found that, successful. saw that it was successful. It was, you know, um, um, you know, they were, they were, they, the the population thought scientifically, and in, 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 in that they uh, were able to go with what was what showed good evidence for for good medical care, and and uh, and then and then the country followed uh, and and did it as a as a as a nation. For America, is that going to be Oregon or California that's going to be the, the bellwether state to lead us into Medicare for all? Oh well. Uh, maybe California, but uh, but right now um, Vermont probably is is a step of, um, ahead of, of of Oregon and California. Um, they 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 may be held back a little bit by the Obamacare uh, limitations. Yes. They they voted to uh, to provide a a, a statewide single payer um, uh, approach to to uh, medical care, but then. Have had to compromise because of uh, uh, of the um, the federal program. Obamacare is not um, is not going to allow that. Is going to delay that. Uh, I would say. Um, hopefully, they will be uh, in. Uh, I think it's 2014. They may be able mm -hmm. to to um, to really become a single payer uh, program. So, um, so we, we had some things about o Obamacare, uh, and I think that's really what I think. Oh, I think Obamacare holds us. You got us about two minutes left for us to continue oh. talking. <laughs> <laughs> holds us. It holds us back from from doing a, a lot of what we could be doing, um, and it's um, you know it's limiting it to these exchanges, which uh, w which then don't serve everybody. Um, they may serve more people, but they don't really serve everyone. And really, universal health care is what is what is needed. We can't leave anybody behind. We can't leave anybody uh -huh. behind. That's exactly right. So the good part is it brings more people in, and, and the bad part is it leaves some people behind. All right. So it's close to time for us to stop visiting and get ready to say good night. Keep your pens and pencils handy. You may want to jot down something that we'll show you in the closing credits. Give, give us feedback about what you think of the show and what you think of Dr. Hank and me. And we've got to tell you about some public service announcements. That's one on the screen right now. To get my show a local broadcast schedule, go to my website, www.donbayam.com, and click on Present Day Activities. Next PSA, please. And my shows are available on the web. Go to my website again and click on Favorite Links. There's a couple hundred shows there. Oh, the ACLU, the American Civil Liberties Union. Without the ACLU, our civil liberties would be further in the tank. So join the ACLU and give them a call. And I've been a member now for 30,000 years, I think, and I, I love them. Next PSA, please. They get my show is broadcast by other stations. Uh, ask your local public access station where you're living, whatever city in the country, to go to pegmedia.org and follow the instructions there. And you can have my shows uh, picked up by them and broadcast locally rather than how you're watching it right now. Next one, end corporate personhood. That Supreme Court decision was devastating. We've got to show that corporations are not persons and money is not speech. Move to amend the Constitution so that we can reverse that Supreme Court decision, which is utterly outrageous. Do you think so? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, uh, that's an old message, but I still love it. Rest in peace, poor people's president, Hugo Chavez. He's, he's one of my heroes. And thanks for watching. Remember KFC? Not that KFC.
Dr. Donsky, FC, kind, friendly, and charitable. Be kind, uh, be friendly, and be charitable to you too, and you, and you, and you, <laughs> and you. And if you want to say a word or two before we leave to the uh, viewers, Dr. Hank, say something to that camera right there. <laughs> to, to this one here? This one. All right. Okay, well, thanks very much, Todd. <laughs> yeah, I've enjoyed having you here, yeah. and I hope we'll have you on again, all right? Thank you again. Mm -hmm.